The Antrim coast is home to Ireland's most iconic volcanic rock formation, the Giant's Causeway. Around 60 million years ago, this area under my feet would have been one huge valley filled with lava that would then have cooled and cracked really slowly over thousands of years to create these incredible geometric columns. Kirsten, can we say they're hexagons? I would call them polygonal. Some of them are five-sided, some of them are seven-sided, and indeed, the legend has it as there's one eight-sided shape, and that's called the Keystone. I where don't know is what, it? I don't oh, know where it is. We love that's a legend. legend. So there's one here that's eight-sided. It's the so. Keystone. If you find it, what happens? You become a queen or something? I'm not or? entirely sure. If you find it, you can let me know. <laughs> OK, we'll go hunting for it afterwards. <laughs> so talk me through how this particular rock formation came to be. To talk about this rock formation, we need to talk a little bit about the environment in this area at the time these formed. So we're going to go back around 60 million years ago. There's volcanic activity. And as we had the volcanoes erupting, they spewed out lava that would have covered the entire area. OK. But it wasn't continuous. That volcanic activity stopped. And we got weathering and erosion, and we got river valleys forming. So you had lava flows, they cooled. You had erosion, then another lava flow. Exactly. So we had this further volcanic activity. And as the lava poured out this time, it was more localised and the lava itself flowed into these river valleys where it cooled very slowly. The slower cool is exactly what gives us these beautiful polygonal regular geometric shapes because what happens is at the surface of this river valley that's now filled to the brim with lava, the lava itself cools down and it contracts. As it contracts, you get cracks that evolve at the surface and those cracks generally occur at 120 degree angles because that is the one that is most efficient in nature. And we see this, for example, in, in other areas. If you look at a puddle that dries out in the mud, it'll always be that shape as well. And as those cracks then grow and as the lava cools down, they permeate downwards and give us that beautiful column shape. And that's why you get vertical columns. Exactly. But we do see some of them sort of like this. So the ones that aren't at a vertical angle, all they're doing is displaying where the cooling surface was, because these cracks always form at right angles to the cooling surface. OK. So where we're sitting, we know that the cooling surface was at the top and the cracks go down. Gotcha. But don't forget, these are river channels. And therefore, we've got the sides, we've got the bottom, and we've got the other side. And if they are close to the cooling surface at the side, they will form at a right angle to that. So it gives us a really good indication as to the shape of the landscape around here about 60 million years ago, just by looking at the cooling cracks in the basalt itself. And it's called the Giant's Causeway because it's just rife with all sorts of legends, but people have certainly been fascinated with this place for centuries, haven't they? The Giant's Causeway itself has really attracted visitors since the 18th century, and it's all down to uh, a Dublin watercolourist called Susanna Drury who painted a famous watercolour of the Giant's Causeway because back then they had no idea how these sorts of rocks formed. It was like nothing they'd ever seen. We have the advantage now of knowing what rock formations are like around the world, but back then they didn't, so this was really unusual. It attracted the attention of a series of uh, engravers who then produced postcards that were then sent all the way around Europe, and that's how the tourist industry around here started. Now, there is one particular legend, my favourite actually, that Fionn McCool brought over his lover from Scotland, who happened to be a giant, by the way, all the way over using the Giant's Causeway. But is there any truth to the Giant's Causeway actually extending all the way to Scotland? There's a little bit of truth in so much as there are similar geological features here as there are on the west coast of Scotland, because this whole area was subject to the same type of volcanic activity. However, we don't think the causeway actually extended all the way from here over to Scotland, so I'm afraid that, that myth is, is exactly that. How common is this kind of rock formation globally? This type of rock formation is actually quite common globally. We find examples of these kinds of, of columnar basalt, as we would call them, all the way around the world. But what's really special about the Giant's Causeway is the story it tells us about the opening of the Atlantic and how it's all linked in together. This island's journey has been shaped by vast, dynamic continents moving across the Earth. As they came together, oceans disappeared. When they moved apart, mighty oceans formed. How exactly did the North Atlantic begin to form? What was going on? 
So if you can imagine, around about 145 million years ago, South America was connected to Africa, and we had North America connected to Europe, and they were all connected together. So around about 145 million years ago, South America slowly ripped away from Africa. The gap in between was then filled by an ocean, and then gradually that movement spread north, and about 85 million years ago, North America pulled away from Europe. That's us. And then the North Atlantic formed. Where's the water coming in from, though? So it's essentially coming in from the continent. So it forms really, really slowly. Don't forget, they form only around about six centimetres every year. So as the continents pull apart, the space in between is then filled with water, whether it's from um, the land masses that are adjacent to it or whether it's from, from rainfall. How long has it been since it began to pull apart and the North Atlantic started forming to today? So to today, it's been about 85 million years. So it's actually a really quite a young ocean and it grows at around about the rate that your, your fingernails grow if you want to look at it in a, in, a, in a context we all know. And it will one day disappear. Oceans come and go. This one, as I say, is probably around about halfway through its cycle. Halfway through its yeah. cycle. So another 85 million years or so yeah, roughly. of opening up That's it. before it closes in again. Yeah. So what will happen usually is that whenever they open up in the middle, the new crust that is being created, the opposite end is being destroyed somewhere else. So if you like, the Earth is like a massive big recycling plant. New crust is created and old crust is destroyed. And that's the way it has been since the Earth first formed. When the Atlantic begins to close again, what will happen to our little island? The island that we've been on has gone on such a massive journey. It's gone from the very far south of the southern hemisphere to where we are, around about 55 degrees north of the equator. We could take a guess and say that we will be somewhere further north, but that's probably as far as I'd like to put my money on, to be honest.